Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Prophecy Roundtable. We don't have all the answers, but we're going to have a great conversation. And we have L.A. Marzuli on today, and we're going to talk about, well, Nephilim, aliens, and the end times. And I'm looking forward to this. It's always a delight to uh, chat with L.A. Uh, he and I go way back. We are very much interested in, in Nephilim and all that stuff. And so uh, without any further ado, uh, L.A., we're just so glad to have you on the show with us. Yeah, grab well, some water. <laughs> actually a little coffee but um yeah it's great to be great. here thanks for having me on guys absolutely absolutely yeah well you know there's a lot of things uh going on there's no question about that um yeah kind of what's been what's been happening in your world what have you been working on well the lord redirected my steps we were actually supposed to be filming this summer uh, in an undisclosed location in europe someplace and um so we were all set to go and uh, we were actually skiing up a mammoth when this happened. So this is like February. And I get a little tap on the shoulder. And, and the Holy Spirit just speaks to me and just says, don't go. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't understand. <laughs> I immediately start arguing with him. He, he's, he, he'll have none of that. So um, I keep it to myself for about two hours. And then my wife and I are at dinner. And it's kind of like Abraham. You know, it's like. Yeah, I'm going to leave the place where you are. I'll, I'll tell you where you're going type of thing. But that's exactly what happened. So the moment I told her we're not going to Europe, then the Lord gave me marching orders. And he said he wants this series finished before the end of the year. So wow. this, is, this is a five-disc set on the UFO phenomena. Um, we thought there was only going to be three films. It looks like it's going to be four. So six is on the cattle mutilations. And as mm -hmm. I said off air, that's pretty much done. It's the darkest film I've ever been involved in. Very mm -hmm. disturbing. But we're, we're doing pre-sales on that, and that'll be released probably, you know, 20 days from now, 15 days from now, something like that. And then after that, we've, we've already got the Roswell film in the can. But wow. that's at least, we're probably two shows with that. We went to Roswell. We went to the debris field. Um and I mean, I'll just I'll just tell you guys. I mean, you're one of the first people that that I'm gonna spill the beans to. We we found a piece of the wreckage. Really? Wow. Absolutely. We went to the debris field with two guys with metal detectors, and we were digging. The metal detector went off, and the guy that we were with, we were with, um, he had been out there at least twenty over times, so we knew what to look for. And he's had the metal tested. And the, we found this about eight inches down. We found a very small piece of metal, about an inch and a half long at the most, about the width of my little finger, and folded in on itself. And uh, very difficult to break or bend. And um, that's, it's still there. So it's like, wow. Uh, yeah, he has. Wow. He has about, I guess, maybe seven pieces that he's found on a debris field. How do you we know have, it's? How do you know it's it's alien? How do you know that it's not just well, well, metal? All we all we know is this. Okay, all we know is this. This is in the middle of nowhere. Whatever yeah. this thing is, shouldn't be there. Number one, and certainly yeah. not buried eight inches below the surface. Number two, but we had it tested, and the closest come that comes the closest metal or alloy that comes to it doesn't exist till 1972 <laughs> and it's an aluminum alloy but it's mm -hmm. not a match it's not a, it's not a total match but it's the closest thing to it so roswell is is 47 72 is you know a couple of decades out and then we get this aluminum alloy which is similar to the metal that we find on the debris field mm -hmm. but it's not a match and it's not a match to anything that we know. Hmm. So this, this of course, jives with Jesse Marcel, senior story, junior story, Linda Marcel, all the people we've interviewed over the years. But I have to tell you, you know, Psalm, two, Psalm 62 says, you know, the Lord is your guardian. The Lord is the shade over your right hand. The sun will not beat down you by, upon you by day, the moon by night. So we're out in the debris field, and it's supposed to be like 95 degrees that day, okay? And it's not. 
there's this cloud like right over us the entire time. There's a cloud. I'm sitting there going, I can't believe this. To the north of us, it's it's bright sun. To the south of us, there's all these rainstorms and you know just crazy weather. But where we are, there's just a cloud the entire time we're there. We filmed there for about three hours, two three hours, and hmm. and, we, and we found two pieces of metal there, and 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 Ken was our was our guide there. Um, he's been out like I said twenty times before, and um, he also found three army fatigue buttons that shouldn't be there either. And those buttons are from, were issued between 1940 and 1950. They're an aluminum button. Nothing alien about that at all. But what's interesting is it kind of blows the weather balloon story right out of the window. <laughs> on, on so I, I've, I've got a question. I mean, I've, uh, and I, from what I know of your research, I, you know, I think we're both under the impression that these are, you know, Alien aliens are are demons or fallen angels yeah. masquerading as you know. Yeah. So how does an actual metal you know object come into existence from the other realm or from this you know from the spiritual incarnation shall we call it? How do they do that? Well, let's open up the can of worms. There's a book I'm working on now called Supernatural Technology in the Bible, and chapter one deals with the flaming sword at the Garden of Eden. Hmm. So. You know, we have the cherubim, and, and there's there's a lot of mystery there. It's only on the east gate. So the north, south, and the west gates don't need to be guarded, but we don't know why. A lot of conjecture there. We can talk about that till you know, the second coming. And we don't know. We don't know why the other gates don't need to be guarded. But the east gate is guarded for some reason. So the cherubim are there. But then you get this thing which is flopping all over this place, which, you know, the, the lightsaber, the flaming sword, which turns every which way, people can disagree on that, and that's okay. In my opinion, that's that's divine technology. That's technology that we see in the biblical narrative, and we don't know, you know, we don't know what it is. When you go to Second Kings, and and uh, Elisha goes, uh, Lord, open his eyes to his servant Gehazi, and Gehazi goes out, and he sees one hundred eighty thousand Syrians encamped around them, and they're they're going to be toast in the morning. And the Lord opens his eyes. I saw the chariots of fire. So he's looking at some sort of some sort of celestial craft above or something above the Syrian army that he has no words for. Chariot, which is what they have thousands of years ago, and a fire. So he's relating relating it in using the vernacular and the verbiage, which makes sense in his worldview, in his grid mm. system. Today, sure. I think if we were there we go, aha, I know what that is. Yeah. So, and then you get Gary Stearman's uh, encounter. And I, another another gentleman, uh, Pastor Matt Freeman, asked the Lord if he could see one of the good guys. So he's in a plane, and we broke the story. And well, we haven't released the film yet, the interview with Pastor Matt. So he's in a plane, and he's asking the Lord, can I see one of the good guys? And so he's on a plane, and... And he's kind of getting nervous because it's like the plane's like in, in a landing mode. All of a sudden, he's on the window seat. All of a sudden, in front of him and to the right below him, this this bright object appears and then comes flying right at the plane and literally comes right under the wing, right right by the window, but under <laughs> the wing. And he's just he's like, oh, my gosh. So I'll give you another one. And there's a lot of conjecture on this, this and it's sort of tongue-in-cheek on my part. So when Joshua sees the angel, uh, the commander of the Lord's host, and the sword is drawn, that's technology. Mm. Okay. Now, now Jesus can blink his eyes, and there's a sword. I get that. And this is where I kind of have fun with the passage. But what if, because you know this, this Doug, when, when the fallen ones come down, they teach mankind metallurgy, you know, the, right. the findings of metal and all this stuff. Right. So what if, what if, you know, they hang a couple of signs on the, on the uh, <laughs> on the streets of heaven, don't ask me how this works. We're going to have a contest for the Lord's sword, and all the you know maybe like twenty or thirty angels get together and they're you know make taking the alloys and making this stuff. And look, I I'm not saying that's what happened. I, like I said, it's tongue in cheek, and I have fun with it. I get it. Jesus can create all things like like the loaves and fishes. But what if what if he doesn't do that? 
What if he goes, I want to, you know, who, who can make me a really cool sword? And, you know, these angels have been around for who knows how long. And so, and they're spiritual beings and they're, they're a lot smarter than we are. So maybe, maybe that's how things work. I'll give you one more. The, 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 uh, the Umen and the Thumen, the, um, the breastplate of the high priest. If that's not technology, I don't know what is. You know, the stones light up. Uh, it's just like, you know, how, how does that work? And then, of course, everything yeah. finishes. I'll tell you one story um, in, in my research. You guys are getting some good nuggets here, by the way. <laughs> uh, and I haven't told this publicly yet. This is in the book. So according to the legend, um, a thousand years ago when the Crusaders, roughly a thousand years ago when the Crusaders come in and take Jerusalem, a rabbi comes out and he gives this knight a papyrus box and in the papyrus box is one of the stones from the breastplate. Okay. Hmm. From the breastplate. One mm -hmm. of the 12 stones. So fast forward to a few years ago, this pastor <clears throat> um, gets wind of this and he's asked to come and look at the stone hmm. along with an Israeli gemologist. So they go down um, and they, they look at the they fly down to South Africa where the stone is. And there's a, there's a chain of custody that goes back centuries. The stone's handed to this person, this person, kept in the same papyrus box. So they get there and they're whisked away in a limo. They get to the place. It's in a vault. There's armed guards in the vault. And uh, they walk in and here's the papyrus box. Would you like to see it? Yes. Open the box. And they put it in the pastor's hand. Now, the stone is just dark gray when they take it out of the box. Mm -hmm. But when it's placed in the pastor's hand, who's born again and spirit-filled, the stone lights up. <laughs> mm. Wow. I mean, what, what do you do with that? I mean, you just... Anybody catch that on video? Door. I'd love to see that. That'd be amazing. You, you and me both. <laughs> but it, it gets better. It gets better. And as a Hebrew scholar, Doug, you'll appreciate this. The gemologist won't touch it with her bare hands. So she takes, she's got white gloves on and she takes it and she begins to look at the stone. And by the way, the stone goes dark with her. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And she looks at it and inside the stone, which is impossible to do, the letter, the Hebrew letter bet for Benjamin. And there's the head of a wolf. Hmm. And she, she's just going, this is impossible. This was made this way the stone was created this way and how is that possible well that's what god does he's got a sense of humor i guess so you know <laughs> there's technology so, so I, i'm, I'm really curious to answer your or, question go ahead, uh, scott okay sorry um so I, i've been thinking a lot about satan's end game how do you think I mean, and by the way did you see the movie uh eternals the marvel no, Eternals but I, I know okay. about it. I know. About okay. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so the basic thing is that aliens have been watching over mankind for all these years. And um, do you think that could be part of Satan's basic plan that when God sends the two witnesses, they come as sort of the bad aliens that are coming to wreck our way of life. And <laughs> Satan might be like, Hey, I'm here to help. I've been watching over. And by the way, all of this you know, alien stuff, UFO stuff that's been happening is sort of stage setting to say, look, you know, clearly we've been here. We've been watching over you guys. You know, we're super duper powerful. And if you ever need, you ever need anything, give us a call. You know, um, I don't know. Have, have you kind of ever given any thought to that? Whole yeah, idea? I, I, I call that. You just outlined what I call the coming great deception. That's exactly okay. that okay. is that is the field manual. That's yeah. exactly what <laughs> and, and we're being set up for it. Right. Uh, the guy won't mention his name. He's he he was a Christian, but now he's trying to tell us that it's really the Anunnaki that that was that was here, and you know the uh, God of the Old Testament is this you yeah. know evil guy, and it's like yeah. you know it's like all this other stuff, and they make it's a straw man argument with the Anunnaki. Goes well, this is older than the Bible. 
Well, yeah, but I get that. So when, when Moses and Aaron show up at Pharaoh's court, there's a full-blown occult paradigm. That's a lot older than Moses with his goofy little stick there, right? And, you know, the, the magicians, nobody cares, throws down the stick, it becomes a snake. We all know the story. But what's right. never taught in the church, there's a full-blown occult paradigm. And the magicians just go, oh, well, so what? They throw down their staff. No one's rushing out of there going, oh, my gosh, the serpents in the Pharaoh's court. Everybody's just kind of going, yeah, now what? What, what? what have you got now for us, Mo? You right. know, yeah. Mickey Robinson is just, what great casting, right? The Ten right. Commandments. Where's your Messiah now? It's just like <laughs> It's just unbelievable. But I just, I crack myself up when I, when I listen to Billy Crystal do that. Or watch it do that. It's just it's great, right. great thing. But I, yeah. I, I go down a rabbit trail. I think I call it the coming great deception. We are being set up for it. The Christian, the Christian um, uh, look at the end times. You know, because they did not believe the truth, God says a strong delusion. Second right. Thessalonians. So what? What's the truth? The truth is that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything that was made. That's the that's the truth. Now we can believe that or we can believe the fallacy of Darwinism, <laughs> where over millions of years of mindless evolution, somehow the, you know, male and female and reproduction system and this whole thing. Oh, in the eye, just, you know, well, we didn't get the eyes right the first couple of hundred thousands of years, but now we got it right. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so, so that's... Hey, hey. Ellie, don't you, you think part of the, what a lot of the actual atheist scientists are now... They're actually looking at science going, well, this a biogenesis, this this evolutionary theory we've been holding on to because it's all we had. I, I know many of them now are teaching the panspermia theory, which yes. falls in the line with this great deception. Yes. I personally believe that that they're going to reveal themselves as our gods and they were the ones. That oh, yeah. Created us. Oh, and we can, yes. 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 We can become like them. We can become more evolved. We just mm -hmm. have to place our faith in them yep. and, and and falls into that lie, that great deception. Uh, this and is Doug's this point, the game plan. Yeah, Doug and I differ on the timing a little bit, but on the two witnesses, I, we align on that. In other words, these two witnesses are going to be preaching a repentance, you know, a coming judgment, a repentance. No, you can't have sex with men. No, no, little <laughs> boys are off the table. You know, don't cheat on your wife. Basically a return to truth. And I believe the aliens are going to be going do it, preaching a do what do as thou wilt. All we do need is absolutely. love. Be one nice to one another, you know. But all we need is love, like it, diversity. It, 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 it <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I can't agree with you more. I mean, there, there's a little saying I say that when when they show up, they will tell us this: that they created all life on this planet. They genetically manipulated early man. They jump-started the world's religions and also jump-started the world's civilizations. Now, at this critical juncture in human history, they're back to usher mankind into a golden age. That critical juncture in history, I believe, and so do the late David Flynn believe the same thing. There's going to be a nuclear event. That's going to trigger it. And, and Doug, I'd love to get your take on this. You know, when, when, when Jesus um, cast out the... Uh, cast out the demons from the man of the tombs mm -hmm. and they say, Hey, you know, no, you're not, don't send us to the abyss. It's not our time. Wait a minute. That, that phrase is so pregnant with meaning. How do they know it's not their time? What do you mm -hmm. mean? Demons know it's not their time. What, what, you know, what, what does it look like? You know, the angel who speaks to Daniel chapter, chapter two, verse 43, you know, seal up the words of this book. Men will run to and fro over the face. It's actually not chapter two. That's the seed. But men will run to and fro over the face of the earth. Knowledge will increase. How does the angel know that? You know, where, where's that information coming from? So this is conjecture. Is it possible that both the good guys and the bad guys see the timeline? They're not all knowing like God. They don't know how it's all going to come down, but they see parts of it, which is why the demons can go, nope, nope, we're not going to the abyss. It's not our time. We'll go into the swine. And then the angel says, Seal up the words, Daniel. Man will run to and fro over the face of the earth, which is where we are now. Knowledge will increase, which is where we are now. So that being said, um, we're being set up. We are absolutely being set up for these guys. And they are they are waiting. This is this is pure conjecture. And and I can't 
I can't prove it, but I know this, that they, the UFOs, are obsessed with nuclear technology. Mm. This is why when we interviewed Robert Salas, no relation to Bill Salas, when we, we interviewed Robert Salas for, for our watchers, we broke his story. Maelstrom Air Force Base. We broke the story in Watchers. Now it's all over, you know, all these, all, he's made the rounds, but we broke the story. And Salas was the base commander of, uh, I think it was nine intercontinental ballistic missiles. Well, the UFO appeared over the gate and shut all the missiles off. So this is really big in ufology because people mm -hmm. go, well, wow, why are they so obsessed with, you know, nuclear bases and this type of stuff? It goes back into Roswell. Why the crash outside Roswell, 509th base, even though they had no nuclear bomb there, they were involved in it. So is it, do the, this is pure conjecture. And I've, I've never, I've said this maybe on one other show. So you guys are, are kind of getting the, you know, the breaking story, at least from my, what I think. And I could be dead wrong on this. I'm, it's just conjecture. But is it possible that they know that there's some sort of nuclear event on the planet which triggers their arrival. Could it no. be that it's going to, that Damascus will be destroyed? That's actually what I'm proposing in uh, Regenesis Code, which, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> um, I will yes. get to it at some point. Good book. Great book. <laughs> it's one of the best I've ever written. But um, yeah, so that's actually how we start the book. I'm kind of giving a little spoilers here, but uh, Damascus uh, gets destroyed and, you know, then the whole kit and caboodle gets going uh, as a result of that. And um, and we have aliens showing up over nuclear bases and, yeah. you know, essentially shutting them down to say, hey, we're big and powerful. So make yeah, sure yeah. to listen to us. And I actually think I, th I think what the way I see this happening is that that the um, <clears throat> all of this, this UFO and alien stuff is going to endorse the man that they raise up. I agree. They're going. They're going to say, "Hey, we're behind this guy, right?" Yep. And and they need somebody with boots on the ground, yep. right? We all know that they've been working on this, um, you know, all of the abductions, and they're trying to create some kind of a human, a, a hybrid race. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, this is uh, what um, John Mack and uh, David um, Jacobs, Jacobs, thank you, uh, you know, have been talking about for a long time. Uh, that they're trying to come up with something because they ev they live as some kind of a semi-materialized uh, species and, and they need something here. And, and I think this is where the Antichrist will come in. He's going to be the beast, right? He's going to be the guy that actually mingles, hybridizes with Satan. And, uh, and, and then they're going to say, we're, we're with this guy. Okay. And so listen to him. This is the one that we've chosen. This is our yep. son in whom we're well pleased. You know, <laughs> And, yeah. and, you know, and so I think a lot of the stuff that we've been seeing is all stage setting to say, you know, we're here, we're big, we're powerful. We don't care about anything you guys do. And you know, what's interesting. I was listening to this interview by George Knapp, who is saying that, you know, he was asked the question, do you think they live out, you know, beyond our solar system? He's like, no, I, I think they live right here. They live right here behind some kind of a psychical, a thin psychical dimensional membrane. Uh, that others call the cosmic curtain. The Bible calls it the veil, you know? And, and so it seems like a lot of people are coming to this idea. In fact, where do we often find them? Under the water. I mean, <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, right? Where do we see that in Revelation 13, right? And I was on the sand of the seashore and up out of the water came this beast, you know? I mean, we keep seeing all these things that are happening there as described in the Bible. And yet we're seeing these play out uh, in real, in, the real world with, you know, it's being documented now with the, with the Navy at whatever, at least it's coming out. I mean, well, the drip, and drip, drip. In other words, and it's exactly, not so much yeah. drip, drip, drip anymore. The faucet is being turned on <laughs> exactly uh, well, it, as far as the public. Yeah, it, it is. And it isn't. Um, I have a, I have a friend who is active in one of the agencies who feeds me information, nothing, nothing that's not public, but he weighs in on, what what this whole Cong congressional so-called UFO disclosure? It's it's Kabuki theater. It's a dog and phony show. I mean, they're not they're not they're not coming. They're, they, and they never will. They're not being straight with the American people. They're not elected officials, and they're running the things behind the behind the behind the curtain, as it were. And mm -hmm. we're not being told the truth. Um, but when the whistleblower comes up and says, "Yeah, we've got craft." 
that's not made on this world. Bob Lazar said that in the 90s. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, I talked about <laughs> it in the 90s. I interviewed Lazar. I met the guy. You know, I've always believed Lazar's story. Um, but it's being handled. If you look at the people who get on and talk about it, it's Luis Elizondo. Oh, wait, he's part of the government, isn't he? Wow. It's George Knapp, <laughs> who's probably okay. an insider, too. It's Christopher okay. Mellon who's ex-CIA, yep. but guess yep. what? Once in the agency or always in the agency. And we've <laughs> got our friend from over, over across the pond, Nick Pope. Oh, wait, he was in the English version of the CIA. Yeah. I uh -huh. mean, and then we've got Leslie Kahn. You know, I mean, all these people are handpicked. They've been handpicked forever, and, and they're just constantly trotted out, the little dog and pony show. Well, did Tucker <laughs> really, really flunk out of the CIA? <laughs> Yeah, once in your awesome. he did. <laughs> I have a feeling he didn't. <laughs> uh, it's a Republican Party. It's just it's, maybe I should accept this so you know if I accept it, it'll bounce you guys out. <laughs> they, they go, instead of LA, they go, is law there? It's just like law. <laughs> <laughs> it's just unbelievable. <laughs> Not a lover nickel. Not a lover nickel. Go away. So you know what I find interesting. Um is that you know Satan does not know when the curtain's going to come up. He doesn't. I agree. He doesn't. Right. He's not all knowing. Correct. And but he can set the stage, and that's what I, I think he's been doing. Yeah, I think he's I been agree. setting the stage. He's like, oh, I need to move this a little bit over here, yeah, over here, over there. It. He's just tweaking it, you know, because yeah. any moment the curtain can go up. God decides yeah. when the curtain goes up. Yeah. Right? God decides when he's going to start breaking those seals and getting this thing under the under you know going, yeah. right? But. You know, what's interesting is the first century apocalyptus believed that the gates of Hades were going to open up at any moment and that hordes of uh, demons were going to come flying out, shooting their arrows. Right. So they actually thought that was going to happen in the first century. And, you know, I think Satan, not knowing, right, he, he was maybe trying, maybe he was planning on that. Uh, and I think Jesus is like, no, not today. Not <laughs> exactly. not not this yeah. millennia. <laughs> not this millennia. Yeah, not. You got to wait two more days. Yeah, two, two more days. days. Yeah, not today. Pretty not much. today. <laughs> so you know you'll get there, but um, you know obviously that is going to happen one of these days. Uh, it, it is going to open up, you know. But this whole thing, Satan doesn't know, no, and don't. so all he can do is just put as many props on the stage as possible to get us set up. So. It's interesting. You, you started us off with, you know, what, what you found uh, in uh, Roswell, New Mexico with these actual fragments, which is uh, quite, uh, quite titillating uh, to think about that, you know, actual stuff has been found there. Um, I, I'm with you on the technology, you know, I, I mean, you know, we don't know. Okay. So it's kind of fun to conjecture, but you know, God could just snap his fingers and everything happens, yeah. but he doesn't seem to do it that way. He no, seems to, Say, hey, Michael, what do you think? You know, Gabriel, you, what's yep. your big plan? You know, yep. when he sent the, uh, the the watchers to to uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he said it's by decree of the watchers. They didn't say it's by decree of the most holy and high God. Right. He said, no, we're making this call. Right. And so God empowers his beings to to do these different things. And, you know, it, it would be, I wish we could sort of get a divine playbook on. on oh, wouldn't uh, it be great? Oh, that'd my be really gosh. fun. God's like, actually, I decided that Michael and Gabriel and the, the lot get to make a lot of these decisions. And I'm just kind of, I'm going to sit back and see what they do. I mean, you know, he knows, of course, but it, it, it's fun to think about that. And, you know, and so when, when the war breaks out in heaven, Revelation chapter 12, um, what are your thoughts? I mean, how will that look on the ground? How will the world interpret this thing? Well, we know from the Bible's point of view, but yeah, what's the yeah, world going to interpret yeah. it? I call it the great eviction notice. That's what I call <laughs> it. Because that's really what it is. It's like, hey, you guys, you know, you've been slumlording here for thousands of years. You're out of here, you know? And so he gives them the boot. And and that's another thing. And I, you know, it's in the book, um, Supernatural Technology in the Bible, even though the book is still... I think I've got six chapters written and I've been working on this series. So there's only so many hours in the day, folks. And, you know, <laughs> I, hear you. I, I can't, I can't get to everything, although I'm trying. Um, angels, I believe can be wounded. I don't think you can kill them because they're immortal beings. Can't kill them. 
But I think mm-hmm. so when Michael and his angels fight with the devil and his angels, they're not up there thumb wrestling, you know, or having a <laughs> rousing game of Parcheesi. OK, right. your turn. You know, we're not doing that. They're fighting. And yes. the dragon's army is is what does that look like? Conjecture on my part. And I, I'm very much bothered by this scenario, this 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 conjecture. Um what if that's when we see thousands of UFOs appear globally? Just mm. boom, they're yeah. there. Mm-hmm. That's a game you know changer. So I, I read this book. It was really funny. So um, a family member from a while ago um, was reading this book, uh, Way of the Shaman. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, you should watch out. That's a bad, bad book, right? Ooh. But, but I wanted, to, I, I just, thought, I'm going to read well, this so I, I, I can have that. a conversation I've, I've with this yeah, guy, right? Right. I've done the same. And thing. so I read it. <laughs> I think I believed it more than he did. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> oh uh, yeah, I think that's all quite legit, you know. Um, but in a bad way. And he's like, oh, I don't believe most of it, but I'm still into shamanism. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Anyway, when people took ayahuasca, this one guy took ayahuasca. He has this experience, and in his vision whatever his near-death vision he sees all of these stars falling from the sky wow. quote unquote stars right these quote unquote stars fall from the sky and they come down and they tell him we are the real masters of this world we fled here to get away from our Bad enemy right. yeah right so you know, <laughs> yeah so so th- so this guy comes back you know he comes back from his experience he goes and tells the local priest and he, the priest says, oh, yeah, they're always saying that, you know, <laughs> because and he, and he takes him right to Revelation, you know, and he shows him where the stars fall and all this different stuff. And and what I thought was really interesting is, you know, this is their basic story is that, you know, the, the stars falling, at least in the book of Revelation, stars often almost always in the book of Revelation represent angels, not in the entire Bible, but right. in the book of Revelation many right. times. I, I agree. Yeah. And, and, you know, I just wonder if we're going to kind of see sort of sort of what it might look like kind of, you know, falling, you know, falling stars or comets or meteors or whatever the things that actually fall from this guy, um, you know, that might look like something like that. You know, and we even see this in Revelation chapter eight. I saw a great star fall from heaven to earth. I think that is actually talking about Satan because, yeah. you know, I saw, you know, a star having fallen right. is given the key to the bottomless pit or to the abyss right right? so you know i think that that's the event that we're going to see is what will look like a meteor shower but in fact it's actually you know satan and his dudes all fallen to earth um so i don't know i mean (laughs) it's gonna be pretty wild when it all happens Uh, the the last three and a half years of this age is going to be biblical (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I, I, people like I, you know, it'd be cool to live in Bible times. Well, if we're if we're in that last terminal generation, it's going to be biblical. <laughs> and 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 uh, I mean, off the chain biblical. Uh, so, and I and I agree. I mean, when he says the days of Noah, the days of Lot. I mean, mm. all we need to do is look around. What's going on? Uh, the spirit of the age is Baphomet. Head of head of a goat, breast of a woman, body of a man, you know, mm-hmm. leg mm-hmm. legs of who knows what. I mean, it's Baphomet, and we see it being pushed on a global level. Which so one out of one out of five life. children, one out of yeah. five children now are being programmed and with that spirit. And yeah. it's not just the programming and indoctrination, it is a, there's a spiritual component here. Oh, too. there's no doubt about it. In fact, mm-hmm. I've um I live in the Santa Monica Mountains and a mile from me is um i'm not going to say his name publicly because i won't besmirch him but he's in some ways the poster boy for the transgender movement and he's a mile from the house where where i live don't you mean they huh (laughs) don't you mean they yeah Yeah. (laughs) come on get your pronouns right (laughs) exactly let's get the pronouns right yeah i have recently battle this thing and i realize that might sound strange but it's happened once before it happened when i was in fatima portugal filming and we were filming that this was not the virgin mary appearing to the three kids this was an ancient ancient entity and it didn't look anything like the mary of the bible it never said i'm mary of the bible it said when the children asked where are you from it said 
I'm from the sky. Never heaven. I mean, when you go back and you, that's a three hour discussion. I made two films on this, but I'm in, I'm in Porto and we're kind of wrapping things up. Although I still have um, uh, other interviews to do uh, other filming to do. And at like two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, I get hit and I get hit with something that I've never felt before. I'm trying everything in my quiver in my arsenal of spiritual, um, you know, weapons to fight against every scripture. I know everything. I'm not, I'm, I'm on the mat tapping out. I'm not getting anywhere with this thing at all. I mean, nothing. I'm saying the blood of Jesus, no effect. Nothing is happening. This is a principality. It's a whole different number, whole different number than the local down the street, you know, dime store. <laughs> demon. Any local demon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, it's a whole different deal. And I'm, I'm on, I'm basically going, I'm speaking to the Lord. I'm going, I'm out of here in the morning. Get somebody else to make this goofy film. I'm not doing this. I'm gone in the morning. Holy Spirit says, trust the process. It's like, you got to be kidding me. So the next morning I get up, I'm like punch drunk. So the thing backs off. The Lord shielded me. Thing backs off. So the next morning I'm meeting with a philosopher slash historian, a professor, and uh, the cameras are rolling and I go, I stop the cameras and I ask him and I go, let me ask you something. What was here before the Christian world, before, before the Greeks and the Romans came in here? What was here? Oh, the goddess Mora. I go, the goddess Mora? Oh, yeah. She appeared as a beautiful woman, would seduce the men and then turn into a serpent and eat them. <laughs> And I'm sitting there going like, oh, boy, you know, great. Thanks a lot for that. <laughs> so fast forward now, that was in 2017. So now it's 2023. And I'm I'm getting slammed last week. I mean, I mean, just just like slammed. And all of a sudden, what pops into my head, call on the angels. And this has never happened to me before. Hmm. I mean, I'm I'm on the mat tapping out. It's it's mm -hmm. that bad. I I have no power over this thing at all. This Zero. is mystery Babylon. I mean, this is all it is. It, it's mystery it's, Babylon. It is it right. Is. So I mean, wow. And and I and I speak out loud and I say, I say, Father, release your angels, release your angels now with flaming swords to go up against this thing. This has never happened before. It was almost instantaneous. It was like, bam, and the Lord's just peace just came over me, and the thing was gone. I mean, it was just like, what was what, what was that, you know? And it's like, I get it. I mean, look, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm nobody great, but you know, we're the only Christian ministry that's got five DVDs from a <laughs> biblical perspective, talking about the UFO phenomena, and we've got to do probably another four before the end of the year. And we've mm -hmm. got, like I said, six is going to be released. The enemy doesn't want this thing out. I actually call it cattle mutilations. The calling card of darkness is the subtitle. The calling card of darkness. So let's let's talk about that. There's obviously we there. There's always a reason that Satan does things, right? He's not he's not random. Mm -hmm. So you know this takes time and probably some angelic effort on his part, right? Experimentation. Well, maybe. Uh, you know, I, I don't claim to know the answer, but m my thought would be blood. You know, they're into blood. The Absolutely. power, the life is in the blood. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, I think basically he needs batteries. I think the blood is his version of batteries. Yep. And, uh, the more charged it can be, the more innocent it can be, the better the buzz. Okay. And, um, you know, but, but cattle, I guess are a, a decent stop gap. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Why why is he doing it? We know that it is happening, but but why? Okay. What, what are your thoughts on that? This is for those of you who are watching this and aren't used to this stuff and have not traveled down this road. This is going to sound really strange, but I've been immersed in this for for decades, for decades, and it's it's very dark, it's very ominous, it's very nefarious. Women are taken. Now you don't have to take my word for it. You can go back and you can you can Google Brett Bart says Brett Bart Fox News Brett Bear Brett Bear not Brett Bart Brett Bear says that some women who were taken aboard UFOs find themselves pregnant. That's called the the so-called 
alien abduction phenomenon where women are, and this is our, our fourth, our fourth film in the series talks about this, where we actually have four people who have been taken two women and the, and both women, the children, the babies were taken from them in the third month of pregnancy. Okay. So when you take a baby that's not fully grown in the third month of pregnancy, you've got to, you've got to place that child somewhere so it can, it can grow into um, and fully develop. The cow's blood and human blood can be used in, in trans, uh, transfusions. Cow blood, bovine blood can be used in human transfusions. That's a medical fact. In fact, they use, they use bovine blood sometimes in, in uh, theaters of war because mm. it's more readily available. Wow. They also take, they also take, um, let me let me just show you something real quick. Stay there. They also take uh, some <laughs> of the material. Mm -hmm. I'm in my studio here. It's all good. <laughs> At an undisclosed location. <laughs> That's right. They they also take some of the material, and I'll show you some pictures. So, this is what it looks like. Wow. That's where the ear was. The sex organs are cored out. Like I said, it's the darkest film I've ever done. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the anus and udders and sex organs are cored out. Yeah. Yeah, people need to understand it's not just, they're not just killing cows. They're, they're no. doing something very surgical. And the first anus. thing that happens is, is the blood is drained from the mm -hmm. animal. Mm -hmm. Take all the blood. So um, and, and I show this in the film because I, <coughs> excuse me, I'm talking to the rancher who's lost 16 cows. I'm talking to a, a woman who's been immersed in the, in the cattle mutilation of Snippy the horse, which is sort of ground zero. And I, I propose a, a, a theory that is it possible that they are creating artificial wombs? And they said, yes, it, I, I can see how they would do that. So in my opinion, and this is also based on the experiences who were taken aboard the ships and see the, the glass jars, the glass jars, whatever they're made of, with the fetuses in there in different forms of um, development. They've seen it. We, we've heard too many reports of that. So while that sounds completely bizarre, and I show it in the film, what was it, a month ago they were talking about artificial wombs, you know? Um, harvesting mm -hmm. babies in artificial wombs, so we're already we're already playing around with it. Well, the dragon, I remember asking Chuck Muss for this decades ago. The dragon's out number two to one. He's creating an army. So the blood, and I agree with you, they they feast off the blood, but the blood is also used to, in some sort of an artificial womb, with this hybrid entity, which is soulless in my opinion, and looks more alien than human. At least the early ones did. But now they can pass. Hmm. Now they can pass, fully pass. And here's something else. I just heard this today. Um, a friend of mine is uh, was traveling to Los Angeles, and he uh, knew the pilot. He, he's he's also a pilot himself. So he's on the airlines, and he's talking to the pilot up in the cockpit because they know each other. And one thing leads to another. And the pilot says, yeah, uh, I got to tell you something. This whole thing with the these reptilians coming aboard the plane. He says, we keep seeing these, these hooded figures, these men wearing a hoodie with dark sunglasses. They never say anything. And we've seen them now for a couple of months. They, they're, they're traveling on the planes. And we're mm. not sure what they are. They never say anything and never take the glasses off. So maybe the Vogue model wasn't so crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm I talking believe, about. I believe, I be, I, I've seen the video with her. She, Whatever she saw completely freaked her out. She's not drunk. She's she's freaked. She's terrified, in my opinion. She's absolutely terrified by what she sees. So people laugh at it, as people do. But here, I'll give you one more story. We have a show called Supernatural Confrontations. And 
this guy um, is in a pickup truck, his co-workers next to him in the passenger seat. So they go to a fast food restaurant and uh, they place their order at window one. We all know how this works. They go up to window two, they, they pay and uh, they're waiting for their food. So the food comes out, bag number one, the guy reaches up, takes the bag and hands it over to his, to his co-worker in, in the passenger seat. Looks over again, reaches up to get the bag. There's the same woman, but her face has shape-shifted. So half the face is human, the other half is completely alien. Completely alien with iridescent-like skin. She realizes that she's been outed. She covers her face and runs away from the window. And the coworker mm. inside the inside the fast food restaurant goes like this. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you do with that? I mean, I don't get a lot of those, but I, I you know, I, I'm a student of body language. The witness who saw it's telling me the truth. He's got nothing to gain by this. He's not. I'm not paying him five hundred dollars to tell a story. He's coming on and telling a story. So they're they're here, mm -hmm. Doctor David Jacobs' last book, Walking Amongst Us. They are mm. walking amongst us, in my opinion. Where what would be the biblical equivalent of them walking amongst us? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but in the in the end times perspective, where might we find that in Revelation, Isaiah, Daniel? Uh, I don't know, maybe well, Daniel two four two yeah, forty three. Daniel two forty three would be that would be my proof text. Sort of, um, their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave to them. So who are yeah. they? So, right. And that's exactly what we're seeing now. We're seeing the mingling of the sea, but there's no marriage contract. Now, were you, were you teaching this, L.A., uh, back? I guess you've been doing it even back when Missler was one of the original evangelicals uh, that was starting to teach this and what was way ahead of his time. Uh, yeah, way ahead. Chuck, Chuck was a mentor to me on some level, but I also received the gold medallion from Chuck for our work on the Nephilim and, and everything else that we did. Um, we interviewed Chuck. He appears in several of our Watchers films. So, um, you know, I miss him. He was... Uh, I, I really do appreciate his teachings, and I'm thankful they're still up, all, you know, they're still up on the internet. He, he's really got a cool one about what happened at the time of Hezekiah as well, as far as when time changed and how yeah, it might have happened. That's amazing, right? That's how, amazing. how it might have happened with a planet coming in and everybody yeah. would have freaked out. And, right. And, so that, or, or, or Abraham and Sarah regressing. The Lord regresses their ages because Pharaoh is not going to hook up with a 90 year old babe. Yeah, she I'm was yeah, that girl there was something or anything. going on there. Yeah, something else going on. They're, they're regenerated. I mean, you know, we look at this stuff. We have we look at the Bibles. It's all supernatural, except for the genealogies. And even that, in some ways, are supernatural. And yet we, we don't believe it. We, we, we look, well, you know, and we have this. <laughs> Yeah, form of religion mm. with its power, but um, I think Chuck would be blown away had he lived to see just how far we've taken the whole UFO thing. Because the number four in the series is on abductions. The first, the first three films in, in the series deals with the reality of, of UFOs and and what this is and disclosure. Number number two in the series, I sit down with two two major researchers. Um, Francisco Carrera, who is the head of Exopolitics Portugal, and mm. you know he's he's on a he has a different paradigm than than we do, and same thing with uh, Preston Dennett, he's an author, very prolific author, written uh, numerous books on the, uh, the 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 Roswell and the crash and Topanga Canyon UFOs over Topanga Canyon, and his latest book um, uh, is on with an experiencer Dolly, who learns to drive the ships. She's been taken from a very young age. Well, we have a, we're publishing a book by this name, woman's name, Karen Wilkinson. She appears in episode four uh, of our UFO disclosure series. She's the woman that was taken numerous times and impregnated by them three different times. Like Dolly, she had a handler. Like Dolly, she was raped by them numerous times. But like Dolly, she also flew the ship. She also they she was taught to fly the ship. And so this is groundbreaking news because you know we've got we know that they're doing it, but she came to Jesus, and that's when things changed. Where Dolly mm -hmm. is, in my opinion, 
she's got the Stockholm syndrome on, on steroids mm. where she, you know, she sided with her captors and, and believes that they are somehow benevolent. So, you know, you're taking people in the middle of the night against their will and that's benevolent. You're implanting a five-year-old boy, Emil, which is again, he's in our watches series, but later on he appears in, in, in episode four of our UFO series. And Emil Jurek is, has been taken by them since he was five, six years old, just like Karen. And he, and he goes, you know, they used to lock me in my room at night, you know, lock some of the doors and on the windows because they were afraid I was going to drown in the pool. They find mm. me outside the next morning. Locks are still on the doors. And he looks at the camera and goes, explain that to me. So, you know, there's a nefarious agenda here. It's, it's Daniel chapter 2, verse 43, on steroids. Um, if, this, if these aren't the last days, I mean, I'll shave what little hair I have left on my head and become a Buddhist. But um, <laughs> this is it, guys. Uh, is, LA, it's it's it. probably just a coincidence that, you know, UN Agenda 2030, transhumanism, alien disclosures, and it, it has just been, it just happened to be about two days since Yeshua returned to his place. Total coincidences. Total coincidence, right? <laughs> Doug, Doug will get on to me. He sometimes thinks I'm maybe a little too dogmatic and I never teach or preach or say, sell everything, go to the top of the mountain. No, of course not. Yeah. But if, you know, he admonished the Pharisees at the time and, and the religious leaders you know, you can look around and know, how are you how are you not seeing what my word said would happen at this time? In right. other words, it, it's he was pretty upset at them. For, yeah, very for, much. So. For missing the signs, missing. Uh, and, and, and they had this. And I know you guys know this. They had the signs. All they needed to do was count from when the decree from from Cyrus goes out till Messiah comes. It's all they have to do. And there he comes walking in right on the day, the appointed day. He dresses himself. He's on the he's on the donkey. I mean, he's he's arranging the whole thing. This is it. This is you know, just count the days. Count the days from a decree to rebuild the temple. And here I am. And they miss it because they did not know the day of your visitation. You know, come on, guys. How much more us? We've got everything at our fingertips. I mean, if this, like I said, this is, we are down. You can't fix this anymore. 20 years ago, I would say, well, you know, we can fix this. You can't fix it. You can't. It's, it's over. I mean, we are, we are head, the freight train is on steroids and the conductor is dead. So yeah, we're, my, we're flying buddy, out the tracks. My buddy Curtis Reed, that uh, he's, he's got a channel, Donkey Speaks. He, he's, he's like me. He's not saying, look, guys, I'm not predicting a date, but the plane is coming in for a landing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 just a matter of whether it's whether it's another five years, whether not ten years. I mean, it it could be longer. I'm I, again, I'm not going to retire and and go sit on top of a mountain and do nothing. Uh, I no, think there's we're, we're called the to keep our hand on the plow. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. working harder now than I've ever worked in my whole life. For crying, I'm 72 years old. I'll be 73 in December. You know, it's like retirement next. What's that? You know, <laughs> there is God when you work with the Lord. But no, this is it. Seriously. So, 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 you know, thinking of coming in for a landing, the, what's the basic scenario? The um, abomination and desolation, the Antichrist or beast, how would all that fit in with the UFOs, in your opinion? Well, it's interesting that the Raelians talk about this, Rael. Rael was Claude Vorlehorn, or whatever pronounce his name, a race car driver. And I interviewed one of the rabbis, his head rabbi for the Raelians. And um, it was a very interesting uh, interview. You can watch that on L.A. Marzulli on YouTube. By the way, we're, we're just, I think we're like a couple of hundred short of 200,000 subscribers, which is pretty amazing. But they, the Raelians have been saying that, when the ship comes, that Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha and Krishna will all come walking out of the UFO. So that's that's certainly a, which of course is a ruse. That that's not the real Jesus, right. but um, and and that certainly is a a very viable scenario. I mean, I could see it coming down a very just exactly like they're saying. Um, I've talked to abductees. Who have been shown, you know, holographic films of the crucifixion, 
how is that possible? You know, so it's we're in the high strangeness here. We really are. And it's, you know, even the elect would be deceived that that were possible. Men think mm -hmm. for fear of what's coming upon the earth. Satan mm -hmm. comes with all signs and lying wonders. This is this is all stops out, man. This is unlike anything we've ever seen. Uh, our friend uh, Brad Myers says uh, Revelation oh, 16. <laughs> yeah, there are three. Hey, Brad. Uh, there are three frog-like demonic beings that do signs and gather the rulers and their armies to battle against the Lord. These are the demonic beings looking like ETs. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, it's some pretty crazy stuff uh, when you start putting it all together. And um, yeah, really yeah, much. yeah. I, I read this well, book. I uh, mention something here, real quick. Yeah, please. That it, 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 Brad Myers is the first guy I know to, that that called it the coming great deception. Now, whether I got that phrase from Brad, I don't know. It's very possible. But I'm, I, I wrote about it in my very first book, which was published in 99. So, you know, I was writing it in 95, 96. So there's possibility. And Doug, you and I have experienced this, where the mm -hmm. Lord will give us, you know, this, a couple of people the same type of a thing. But, you know, Brad also came up with that term, the coming great deception. So hats off to Brad. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um... Wow. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of great stuff. So we're just about out of time. And uh, I know that you have to go to your next thing. Um, where can people find your stuff, L.A.? L.A. Marzulli.net, L.A. Marzulli.net. If you, if you haven't seen any of these folks, you know, buy the set, buy the five box set, invite all your friends over, pop the popcorn, and we ease you very slowly into what's going on. But when you get to number four, that's that's pay dirt big time, because now we're talking to people that have been taken and abducted and the hybrids and what's going on. And it's and number six, which isn't out yet, but it will be, you know, um, the calling card of darkness, because that's what it is. And then, of course, seven and eight will be on Roswell. And, and number nine will be what is the truth? You know, where we've already interviewed Nick Pope and Nick Redford and George Norrie and Gary Stearman and Mondo Gonzalez and others have already interviewed them. And, and, and Doug, I'd like to get you on this, even if it's just a Zoom call where you weigh in on it, because that would be important to have you in the film, too. What is the truth? What are we looking at here? Are these really friendly aliens? Are this, is this the return of the Anunnaki? <laughs> I just love that one. It's just like, ah, you know, it's the Anunnaki. You know, they were here before Moses in the Bible. Well, that's a straw man argument. So what? That doesn't mean anything. You know, so who cares? God moves when he moves. And then that's the truth. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's, it's lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net. Our YouTube channel is L.A. Marzulli. And we're hovering right around 200,000 subscribers. So I do that's five shows a week. Wow. About 199,000 more than I have. <laughs> 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 yeah, awesome. Well, thank you, L.A. Thank uh, you, guys. Really appreciate it. it. Yeah, I just want to let everybody know um, the paper version, the the, the hard the hard copy of Regenesis Code is now available. Uh, the Kindle is still coming, so hang on uh, for that. And the audiobook is available as well, so you can start getting that. So please do. Uh, thank you again, LA. Thank you, Scott. It was great being with you guys. And uh, everyone, hey, the Lord's coming, so... Keep your eyes on him and uh, a lot of good things ahead. Till next time, God bless you.